hello traders and welcome to another video so in this video i want to talk something that's i wouldn't say personal uh but i feel we've on we've all experienced it as retail traders especially if you've been trading for more than a year and you haven't experienced being profitable by being profitable i need you guys to understand me clearly when i say not profitable i do not mean that you do not have winning trades you do have winning trades but then at the end of the week or let's say at the end of the month or at the end of the year your account is down you are losing even if you make a profit and you actually withdraw that profit but at the end of the month or end of the year you are losing money right so that is what i mean when i say not profitable i don't mean that you do not you you don't have any winning trades you're always experiencing losing trades no you have winning trades good winning trades but because of the person that you are and when i say the person that you are because of the identity that you currently have as a retail trader you give all of that money back right so that is what i'll be talking about so especially if you've been trading for over a year and you're not profitable this is what i'll be touching on right so why is trading hard right so i just want to give you guys a quick story uh, of where i started so as you can see on the screen uh these are actual payment receipts uh, for my first ever investment in trading, right? By investment, I mean it's the first sum of money that I ever paid for trading, right? Whether it's to fund an account, but related to trading. In this instance, don't mind the people I paid the money to or who I, I was trying to learn from. I'm not there, guys. I'm not there to talk on them or to expose or whatever it may be. No. But I just want you guys to pay attention to something. This was the sum of money that I paid. And this was back, if you can see here clearly, this was back in 2016. So in April 29th, 2016, I paid the sum of money. Actually, it was 8,000 Rand, which was quite quite a lot back in 2016 it was quite a lot uh, but essentially this is how much I paid and I had paid trying to learn Forex the right way I wasn't necessarily attracted because of lifestyle uh, it had a role to play but I just wanted to learn the craft so I thought to myself that if I do this the right way or if I want to do this the right way I need to find someone who is already doing it and ask them to show me the ropes right i need to, if you want to build a house you need to find someone who build a house you can't go ask a medical doctor how to build a house the same way that you can't ask a house builder or a bricklayer how to dissect or how to do a, a heart surgery right so that is also what i wanted to do i just wanted to compress the time frames for me learning this this craft and then get to a point where I'm proficient, I'm understanding of it. Because at that point, it was something that was foreign to me, right? So, this is where my journey started. And for the next five years from 2016, things did not go as planned, right? So, now I'm going to start crafting what I was doing in the first five years of my trading career, right? So, this will be uh first five years up to 2021 right because if you can if you can pick up some of the errors i was doing in yourself or in your trading like i said especially if you're not profitable yet i'm profitable if you're not profitable yet if you can pick up some of the errors i was doing back then then this might help you right so first five years five years up to 2021 20, right and uh, okay let me just let me just do it like this to make it easier so that you understand why I say up to 2021 and then uh, trading with fundamentals since 20 since july i actually started learning in july right uh not that i started trading with fundamentals in july so july 2021 right so yeah i think 
this is perfect yeah this is perfect right so what was I doing in the first year right let's forget about who I paid to learn from them or whether they taught me what I needed to learn or not let's forget about that but I just want to point out some errors that I was also making myself personally because it's very important that you also take accountability as a person right so one of the first uh, okay let me not say errors because it's what I knew back then right it's not an error but essentially I was trading with technicals with technical analysis Or let's say I was only trading. I was only trading. Yeah. I was only trading with technical analysis. So that was, in hindsight, based on what I know right now, that was one of the errors that I made. I made. I kept on focusing on technical analysis. And why do I say this? Because statistics say, guys, majority of retail traders, 85, or let's just be more, let's just be more, let me say, yeah, let, let us just be more lenient. So instead of saying 85, let's say 80% of retail traders, or even we can say 70% of retail traders lose money. And most retail traders focus on what? They focus on technical analysis. Yes, I can say that confidently right now because of what I know, but back then I did not know. And that is this is the reason why I'm saying if you can pick up some of these traits in yourself, you can try and rectify them if you wanna be profitable, right? So this was the first one of the first things I was doing or the first reasons, right? And then secondly, I hated swing trading. I hated swing trading. Uh, I saw it as a waste of time, right? I saw it as a waste of time. Why did I see swing trading as a waste of time? Because I believed that since the market is open 24 hours, five days in a week, that meant that I could trade at any time and at any point. So I hated swing trading because swing trading meant that I would not have to trade every single hour of the day or every single day of the week and I would also have to wait until I what until I saw the results or the return from my uh, trades that I had running right so that was also one of the things I was doing one of the mistakes I was doing now like I said I can confidently say it was a mistake right I hated swing trading I saw it was a waste of time right and then secondly or thirdly I kept on lying to myself and this guys this is a very deep one this is a very deep one when I say I kept on lying to myself and I've engaged not with a lot but with a yeah with a handful of traders in my in since I started trading and I've realized that I was not alone in this one I kept on lying to myself what do I mean when I say I kept on lying to myself it's the same thing like I said profitable thinking I am profitable just because I had a winning trade I tell myself that I know so I kept on lying myself thinking I know it all thinking I know it all because I just had a winning trade right and after having a winning trade I'd feel like okay I got this I know this and then I'd take three steps back once I start losing again right so why do I say I was lying to myself I was lying to myself because I was not making progress those wins every now and every now and again made me feel as if I was making progress but I was not time was going but I just kept on lying to myself and the, the, the dangerous thing about lying to yourself is that even when an opportunity arise for or an opportunity that can actually help you in your journey you neglect it because the biggest let me write this down actually the biggest hindrance to learning 
is thinking that you know this was the biggest hindrance to my learning guys this was the biggest hindrance to my trading because i kept on telling myself that i know like i'm, I'm still explaining to you guys and here's the here's the the problem with thinking that you know or telling yourself that you know the minute you tell yourself that you know your brain automatically switches off even when people were talking about fundamentals i was like no i have a 90 percent technical analysis strategy fundamentals are not uh, useless i don't trade with fundamentals uh, all my trading decisions are based on technicals even if some people would tell me no look into fundamentals do this do that but because i was telling myself that i knew my brain automatically shuts off it's same with this video i know some of the points i'm highlighting maybe some people might have said it in the past or you feel that you know it just because you think that you know it your brain has your brain has already already switched off so you now feel as if this is not important to you so that was one of the biggest hindrances in my in my in my trading career in those first five years i kept on lying to myself and i felt that i knew what i was doing so even even when opportunities came up that could assist me i wasn't open enough to accept those opportunities because i kept on telling myself no i got this but at the same time i i was not taking the moment to sit down reflect and actually look at the progress i've made and be like no i'm not making progress yes i have winning trades every now and again but i'm not making progress so that was what i needed to do to be honest with myself right and then lastly it's something that i've also realized is that um i also write this in bold is that people who need change uh, people who need okay. okay people who need change the most right they desire it the least and it goes back to what I, I said there about telling yourself that you know it's the same thing here People who need change the most, they desire it the least. People who do not need it the most, they they or who need change the least, they desire it the most. And that's what you always find, right? People who are already at a higher level are always seeking to grow and expand. But people who are always at the at the lower level are not as eager to grow and expand because they keep they keep on telling themselves that they know they keep on lying to themselves and the sooner you stop lying to yourself as a retail trader the better your trading will become the easier your trading will become so the sooner you stop that the easier your trading will become if i were to list a more things that i was doing in those first five years uh yeah it would be a long list but essentially this is just to sum it up this is what i was doing in those five years and with me doing all of these things i was very disciplined by disciplined i mean i mean that i woke up every morning studied back test doing a lot of things that we do as retail traders in the early stages i was focused i was disciplined but then i was not making progress nonetheless so it's not about being disciplined it's not about you back testing more i'll be honest about that but it's about you being exposed to a different source of information to a different kind of information so that you can make progress right so i was still doing all of those things excuse me guys so i was still doing all of those things uh being sleep deprived not sleeping enough because I felt that the moment I'd be sleeping, there would be a move in the market and I would miss the mark and I would miss that move in the market. Like I told you guys, because the market is open 24 hours, five days a week, I felt that every single time was a trading time, right? Or was an opportunity to trade. Might be true for, for other people, but for me, what I did not realize is how much that was setting me back. 
because in me doing all of those things i was pushing my progress further and further away me doing all of those things and not being open to getting assistance because i was lying to myself i kept on funding small amounts of money funding small amounts of money sm funding small amounts of money and looking back it ended up being a huge sum of money that i kept on funding yes i can lie to myself and say that was the cost of doing business like we lie to ourselves as retail traders but essentially it was it was me just bsing myself right because i kept on lying to myself and i kept on donating money to the market unnecessarily whereas i could have just saved up that money received a proper knowledge and proper guidance and then use that money to elevate myself right use that money to grow myself because another 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 paradoxical thing is that people who have the least to lose are fearful of losing it the most but people who have a lot to lose are not as fearful of losing it so i had to 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 reframe my thinking and start thinking along those lines for me to make progress then fast forward to 2021 when i actually started trading with fundamentals right so at this point i i let's just start with the first thing what i was doing here i was trading okay let's not use capital letters so i was trading with fundamentals then okay let's say plus technicals or technical analysis yeah technical analysis and the reason i have fundamentals in bold it's purposeful because fundamentals changed from being the 10 percent in the first five years because 90 percent of my decisions were based on technical analysis i would wake up today and be like okay do quick technical analysis and be like okay i feel like trading this pay then i'd go for that right sometimes it would work but most of the times it wouldn't and maybe you might relate maybe you might not but if you here watching this video chances are you might relate <laughs> but i started trading with fundamentals and i made fundamentals the core of my strategy what made me actually pivot to fundamentals I was watching Bloomberg, right? And I wouldn't watch it as much when I was trading with technical analysis only or in the first five years, but I, I would watch it from time to time, but it wouldn't really make sense. I wouldn't see the use of it. But at this point I was watching it and they came, I think it was, uh, it was, uh, Druckenmiller, one of the most successful hedge fund managers, right? Druckenmiller. And they were interviewing him, right? And this guy, he's proclaimed to be very, not proclaimed, he is successful, he's highly successful, successful with, with billions of dollars in terms of net worth. And then I Googled him, you know, and I read up about him and all of that. But what, but I, oh, I did the whole research on him after, right? Watching the interview. But when I watched the interview, all the questions they were asking him and all the answers he was giving, he was not talking about technical analysis. And this is not me bashing technical analysis. Technical analysis works, right? Technical analysis works. There is a place for technical analysis. Just, just that not in a way that we use it as retail traders. But back to the story, I was watching this interview and in this interview, they were talking about the economy, talking about geopolitics, talking about what is happening around the economy, talking about trade wars, right? Talking about... GDP, inflation, and all of that. What is the growth outlook? Not even once did he answer about looking at the monthly time frame, looking at the daily time frame. You need to look, focus on those three time frame horizons and all of that. Not to say it's not important, but here's this guy who's a hedge fund manager who's highly successful, but he's only talking about these things, these economic factors that were confusing the daylight out of me. Right. I was totally confused watching that interview right now. Of course, I can look back and be like, oh, I understand why I was saying that. But back then I was totally confused. But short, long story short, that was when I made the decision that, OK, this is what I'm gunning for. It has. Rem remember, guys, it's been five years and I'm not making money. 
that is when I was like, okay, this is what I'm cutting for. This is what I'm going for. So I need to understand what these guys understand and stop fooling myself and saying that I'm, I'm trading smart money concepts just because I've rephrased support and resistance or I've rephrased supply and demand to order blocks or something else. So I had, so I made that decision at that point. It was in 2021, around June. That's around my birthday. I made that decision that this is what I'm going to do. And from there onwards, I will dedicate myself, use the very same dedication I had in the first five years of going all in, but in this time, go all in on understanding fundamentals. Because there's a reason this person or the host is asking these specific question to this person who does this for a living, who actually manages other people's money. There's a reason he's asking these questions and they have not asked about technical analysis. And then, of course, that's when it clicked that, okay, that is why majority of retail traders lose because we focus on technical analysis. That is what we do. That is what we know as retail traders. And that is when I started. So I, that's when I started incorporating fundamentals as the basis or as the foundation of my strategy. I, I shift from 90% technicals to 80% fundamentals and then 10% technicals for the entry, right? And how did things go? In 2021 uh, so uh, okay let's do this because I want it to be in bullet points yeah so how did things go in 2021 right so so let's say July July started learning fundamentals, right? And at this point, I totally, I never looked at a chart, I think for like a month, over, close, yeah, over a month, I did not look at a chart. And when I say I did not look at a chart, I mean that, I, of course, I opened a chart from time to time, but I stopped trading completely. I did not execute any position. And I was like, I'm no, for for these couple of days, I just want to try and understand this and see based on my understanding of this, when I go back to a chart, am I finding what the, what the, what the fundamental data was telling me, right? And that is what I did for that first month, July, I'd say July to August, right? That's what I was doing. And then of, obviously I am trading with fundamentals today. So what I found there was remarkable when I actually went onto the chart that, oh my word, what the fundamental data was telling me when I started having an understanding of it, obviously, guys, it did not happen overnight. When I started having an understanding of it, that is when I realized I can actually find the direction without looking at a chart. I can know the direction without looking at a chart just by focusing on some macroeconomic data points or economic indicators they can actually give me the direction so that when I go into a chart, I do not confuse myself by flipping through different time frames, starting on the monthly, starting on the weekly, then going back to the daily. And all of them have conflicting signals because the monthly, the daily is telling me up, the monthly is telling me down. Now I'm confused. I'm not sure which direction should I take, but I'm like, okay, let me stick to the higher time frame direction. But when I do that, I get stopped out and I lose. I try to stick to the lower time frame direction. I get stopped. All of that, it was like a, 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 a curtain was opened in front of my eyes and I started seeing the markets in a different way, right? So I gave myself that period that, okay, I'm not looking at the chart. I'm just going to focus on this and see if it works, right? And this, then that was my finding. But essentially, I started learning in July, right? Then let's say August, August, I became bullish. I became bullish on USD, right? And then this was all just based on fundamentals, just based on what I was learning, based on what I was understanding with GDP, inflation, interest rates, central bank, monetary policy statements. Like I said, guys, I went all in the same way that you are right now going all in on fundamentals, sorry, on technical analysis. 
the same way that you are right now going hard on 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 learning a new strategy because you you found this new strategy on on youtube and you now want to apply it to this new technical analysis strategy that gives you a high risk to reward ratio whatever it may be i i took the same intensity but i applied it in the direction of learning fundamentals and that is what i was doing right so in august i became bullish on usd so that's how short it took me to actually understand trading because at that point i was fed up I was fed up of losing money. I was fed up of giving back money to trading or to, 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 to the brokers. And I didn't want to... When I started trading, I had no plan on providing signals. I had no plan on teaching signals. I showed you guys that I actually paid someone to learn to do this. So for me, I wanted to, to know the skill or to acquire the skill so I can do it at my own discretion at my own pace at my own time i did not want to depend on someone a client or someone to actually generate money i wanted to allow the market to do the work for me right <clears throat> so that is why i started trading so i was frustrated when i was struggling using technical analysis only in the first five years and i and i started resorting to the fact that okay i need to teach people so that I can actually find success in this thing. Because everyone is like teaching people. Everyone is like selling signals. Which means this is the way to make money. Because I'm definitely not making it from the charts. From the market. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to make money from teaching people. So when I came across fundamentals. Everything changed. And I was like okay this is what I've been looking for. I wanted freedom. Right. Of course. Freedom, freedom is a very vague, vague thing. But for me. Like I said, I just wanted to be able to not trade from anywhere. I didn't have all those ideas, but I just wanted a skill that I could use and implement, and something that was different from what I've been used, but from what I've been exposed to growing up. And when I came across trading, I was like, okay, this is what I want to pursue, right? So when I started trading with fundamentals, it gave me that it gave me that independence back because I did not. I wasn't profitable at this point, guys. I'm not going to lie. But I started seeing the light. Okay, I don't really need students. I don't really need people. Yes, I can teach people who want to learn. But I don't really need them. Because it's a mission to teach someone. Right? But back to back to what I was doing there. So that is when I became bullish on the, US, on the United States dollar. Right? And of course, I've done a video on that. So I won't go back to explaining... Or showing you guys why and all of that i've done a video on that uh i think i titled that video uh the way people make money has not changed yeah i'll, I'll just link it up on top here so that you can watch that video then around around november around november all all in 2021 all in 2021 around november i bought I bought USD JPY uh, basic reasons why I bought USG, USD JPY uh, central bank okay let's say economic data economic data right and central bank uh, central bank divergence divergence and a, a very funny thing when i say central bank divergence and economic data it's because it, when i started watching when i started learning fundamentals i watched a video and a guy actually say he actually he was i think it was a it was a, a webinar those old old videos and he was well he started as a retail trader as well it eventually he was in a stage where he was managing people's money and all of that professionally uh, but he, he explained that the reason why he was successful is because of fundamental if there's any and he literally said this in, in this webinar that if you can take away anything from any if you can take away anything from what I will talk about today is the fact that the reason or the primary reason, the only reason I am successful as a re as a trader, that is what he was saying, not me back then, because I wasn't successful back then. I wasn't profitable. 
but he was like the reason I'm profitable and successful in trading it is because of fundamentals and from there when I started engaging with them I wasn't profitable but I started viewing things in a different way the start the market started making sense right it was no it was no longer just a market guesswork every single day where I'm guessing not that confident about the, you know about the direction about what is happening I'm second guessing what is happening if a move happens I wasn't expecting it you know oh why did it happen I didn't know that you know so this is what happened right when because in that specific webinar he spoke about it was into I think the webinar was around 2013 we spoke about USDJPY. It was a buy on USDJPY. And he kept on telling people to buy USDJPY. But of course, the market fell 700 pips before moving up thousands of pips. So when the similar thing happened in 2021, because the similar thing was happening, that is why I bought USDJPY. Of course, based on my also my understanding of the data and what the data was telling me, because the the, the data for the United States was very strong. GDP was around 5%. Remember, coming from COVID, uh, or not COVID essentially, but from 2021, from 2020, coming from that uh, like uh, mini recession or 2020 mini recession or COVID recession, and then now growth is at 5%. When it comes to the dollar, inflation is above 2%. You know? And they keep on saying in their statements, they that's what they want to achieve. They want to achieve maximal employment. Unemployment was also going low at that point. I think it had peaked to around 14% during, during 2020. So all of those things were pointing to being bullish. But on the, on the Japanese side, everything was the opposite. You know? So that is when I actually bought in, 20, in, in November, right? I started having that bias in August. But I actually got an opportunity to buy in November because I re I remembered with that video, with that webinar, that the guy, he told people, and when the market was falling 700 pips as a pullback, actually, people were like, "You are wrong," and all of that, blah 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 blah. But eventually, at that point, I think he he had you had projected that uh, USD JPY would actually go up to 110. Eventually, it got to 110, just that it did not get there as quickly. As people thought it would because if you especially if you're trading with the uh, technicals mostly you are not a swing trader there are people who are swing traders I'm not saying there are not but mostly your your time frame horizon is very narrowed or very short when you look at the market right you don't look at it from an investor standpoint but that was what that is what happened so I remember that lesson I'm like okay I'm looking to buy the dollar. I'm looking to buy it against the Japanese yen. But I'm going to wait for a pullback first. I'm not just going to go in as the market is going up. Let me wait for the market to fall and then go up. Which is one of the things that I told you in the, in this video where I was talking about technical analysis. That wait for what? Wait for a pullback on the monthly or the daily. I learned all of those things in my early stages in 2021 of start, when I started trading with fundamentals. Then I bought in November, right? Funny thing, I did not know, right? So I did not know that this trade that it would be uh, that it would be would be a three thousand plus pips trade in a few months I had never in my first first five years I had never held a trade for more than a month even a month was a long time if I were to even hold a trade but in this case I was able to hold a trade for a close to a year and I made over 300 pips on USD JPY I bought it at around 112 and as you can see of course I did not hold it all the way up to 150 but I bought it around 112 yeah it was at around 112 when I bought USD JPY in, in 2021 and I held it and the, the only reason I held it guys I'll be honest with you the only reason I held on to my position and I did not close and I was so confident 
was because of fundamentals. It's not because I knew where the market was going. I had an idea of where it was going because fundamentals kept on telling me the same thing. They had not changed. And then, interestingly, March, in March 2022, the Fed actually started hiking interest rates. Guess what that meant? That 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 meant when the Fed actually started hiking interest rates. Here's what it meant. My swap payments. Let me let me be specific. My positive swap payments started going up so my positive swap payment started going up so I started earning more in terms of interest rate swaps for holding my position back then it was still around a thousand pips yeah a thousand pips plus minus a thousand pips but I had started earning more and this is when I was like this is it this is what i've been looking for for the past five years this is the missing piece to every retail trader out there who is struggling any retail trader who has been trading for a year who has tried different strategies or different courses centered around technical analysis this is what they are missing this is what they've been missing and like I said, guys, I didn't get into trading to teach people. So immediately when I knew and understood this, I did not go out there to start selling courses. No, I was like, I'm going to use this for myself. <laughs> I'm going to use this to be profitable for myself. Become self-sufficient as a trader. And that is what I was going to do. But this was the game changer for me, guys. This was the game changer. And that is why I say this is how quickly things changed. Because from, imagine, from five years of trading, being confident and lying to yourself that you know what you're doing, whereas you're not making progress, to in a couple of months, of learning fundamentals just because you saw an interview of someone who was doing this thing for a living not someone that you saw on social media who you thought they were doing it for a living no you saw someone who was actually doing it for a living and you saw what they had when you heard what they were talking about of which you didn't understand and you're like okay maybe this is the reason why I'm actually losing money because I do not understand what this person understands. I cannot speak the language that this person is speaking. That is why I'm losing money. Because this person is definitely making money. If he's worth billions, he is making money from trading. Whether he was trading Forex or not, but for the fact that he was an, a hedge fund manager, I knew this is what I needed to learn. So five years of struggling and within a few months, everything changed. And I never looked back since. I never looked back since. Which is why I'm such a huge proponent of fundamentals. Not because I'm trying to sell people something different. Or sell people a dream that is that is different from the technical analysis that I used to. That they are used to. But because it's something that changed my trading. It changed my life. And this is the reason why I talk so highly of fundamentals. And something interesting at that point as well, I would read articles that would, that would be maybe from Goldman Sachs, just a small snippet. And they would say the same things I was, I was expecting about, a, about USD JPY. We're expecting it to push higher because of so and so and so. The same reasons I was also expecting or looking at as the foundation of my trade and that is when i was like okay this is what they mean when they say 
you are trading with the banks literally guys not because of some strategy that i think banks trade this is what they would say in their reports or in articles where they'd be featured or maybe if it's an interview with a portfolio manager who's in charge of certain so and so in 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 goldman sachs or whatever bank of america whatever top high class banks or high level banks they would say this not the same i'm not gonna say the same but we would be viewing things in the same light that is when i realized the power of fundamentals and that is when i realized that okay this is what i've been missing and this is what i'll stick to right so essentially i bought it 112 and then eventually the market pushed higher eventually it went above 150 i wasn't in the whole move but i managed to catch 3000 plus pips and that was the biggest trade of my life and it changed everything and this is the reason why i say trading is hard the reason trading is hard guys it is either you are only trading with technical analysis or you are lying to yourself or you hate swing trading and if you are struggling right now as a retail trader if you've been trading for a year and you are not yet profitable and remember what i said about being profitable guys i don't tell me that you had a winning trade and then you think that you are profitable but you know that it's one winning trade and you've been losing ever since and you know that you're still gonna lose some more that's not being profitable but if you're not profitable and you've been trading for over a year your answer is swing trading number one number two fundamentals is your answer focus on fundamentals learn fundamentals understand fundamentals because here's the truth time will pass anyway whether you learn fundamentals today or not 2025 will come and you don't have to learn fundamentals from me there is investopedia go to investopedia learn learn guys learn if you do some research on on people or on, on big firms that actually do this they manage other people's money they have research departments and there is a reason why they have research departments because you need to learn knowledge is the ultimate risk management guys knowledge is the ultimate risk management in trading in the financial markets knowledge is the ultimate risk management learn if you do not like to learn then enjoy being unsuccessful in trading if you do not like to learn enjoy being unsuccessful in trading right so if you're struggling guys and trading is currently hard for you and as a retail trader like i said your first answer is swing trading second answer is using fundamentals use fundamentals when you use fundamentals you will understand you will have an idea of why markets move if you have an idea of why market moves or why markets move it will instill more confidence in you in your positions in your trading you will no longer hesitate you will no longer second guess yourself it will also help you in managing your emotions managing your psychology that is the power of using fundamentals you will gain confidence if you're confident then you'll be able to execute positions you you'll be able to execute confidently if you know what you are buying based on fundamentals based on what the value is telling you or, or, or based on what gdp interest rates and employment so on and so forth are telling you if you know what you are buying and you know why you are buying it then you'll be making the right decisions most of the time not all of the time but most of the time and stop making excuses and saying that losing money is you it's the cost of doing business no it is the cost of ignorance and the cost of you not knowing something that you should know that is my honest truth guys that is my honest truth knowledge is the ultimate risk management in trading remember that 
And in closing, guys. Now, since 2021, trading with fundamentals. Like I said, I'm profitable. My trading is good. I am happy. Do I need students? Do I need clients? No, I don't. All I need is the willingness to learn. Because there's some day. Here's another thing, guys. When it comes to, to technical and to trading with fundamentals, it's unlike technical analysis where you, you're going to just swing it. Here, there are daily disciplines. There are daily disciplines. And when I say daily disciplines, I mean that there are things you need to do daily. You need to read daily, read articles. I don't care what you think. If you're embarking on, te on, fundamentals and on fundamental analysis, it's not like just popping up a chart and deciding what you're going to do. Read articles. Stay on top of your game. Those are, daily those are just some of the daily disciplines. Right? And then, of course, you also need to delete some priorities, especially shifting, moving from a, a place where you are trading with, with uh, technical analysis. You, for you to be able to make space for fundamentals, you need to delete some priorities that you had before, which is what I did as well during that one month period where I was like, I'm not looking at a chart. I'm not focusing on what other people are doing on social media. I closed myself out. When I come back and I've understood this, and I can get my di and I can try and predict my direction based on this fundamentals. And I go into a chart and it's telling me that. Then it's all go. I know from here the only way is up, and that is what I did. I knew that I had to delete some priorities that I had when it comes to my approach to trading. That is what you also have to do, right? But most importantly, learn. There are daily disciplines. And you need to learn, right? So, like I said, now I'm comfortable in my trading. And I'm able to trade confidently and peacefully, right? And of course, I'm going to show you some of the trades that I currently have running. And last week, I got stopped out in around at three trades. Yeah, three, three, four trades, four trades that got stopped out. All those JPY trades that I was buying, they got stopped out. But here's the interesting thing. I understand fundamentals. I understand what is happening. And I understand why those positions failed. Did that stop me from going back into the market and acting like how I should act, following the same systematic and repeatable process that I've developed with fundamentals? No, it did not stop me. Because I knew and I understood why those trades went against me, right? And I kept on and I and I executed my positions flawlessly during the course of the week, right? But essentially, swing trading is key, guys. So these are just some of the positions that I have running. Obviously, NZDCHF. You still remember NZDCHF, AUDCHF, which was one of the biggest movers last week. And why was AUD one of the biggest movers? If you understand fundamentals, you'll know why. Because China reported their highest imports of iron ore. I think it was above 8% in the period of, 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 of January to February. Iron ore is a component that China uses in manufacturing steel. And the biggest or one of the biggest producers or exporters of iron ore is Australia. And Australia exports iron ore to who? To China. So that headline that said that it's one of the biggest imports of iron ore in a, in a couple of time, in a, sorry, in a long period of time, that resulted in what? In strengthening of the Australian dollar because it meant that if they're buying more from Australia, then it means Australia is going to benefit. Australia is going to grow, right? And that's essentially how I understood it. And why? Because I just knew fundamentals and I kept on doing my daily disciplines of reading articles every single day. And which is why we saw this strong gain in the Australian dollar last week, right? And... 
silver as well it's a fundamental reason why I bought silver it's not just a technical reason it's a fundamental reason why I bought silver why I've been looking to buy gold and then eventually I bought silver if we look at Nasdaq it's a fundamental reason why I bought why I'm still holding over a thousand pips as well since last year October and like I said guys since October 2023 like I said if you are struggling and you're not profitable as a retail trader and you've been trading for over a year if you're still a beginner yeah play around learn your lesson but if you've been trading for a year and you're not profitable it's time to take things seriously focus on fundamentals your first way out is swing trading your second way out is fundamentals if you use those two weapons then progress is guaranteed so this is also a trade that i have and as you can see these are all swing trades and all the trades that i've showed you these are all weekly time frames here we'll have to go to a daily time frame because this one i executed it uh, last week on thursday this is gbp aud and i'm long and the reason for being long and as much as we had good news for australia but the uk economy is actually recovering pretty well in as much as they dipped into a technical recession in in the end of 2023 but based on pmi data and the current data that we're getting it is pointing in the right direction and with the us dollar weakness currently it boosts the pound it boosts the euro and obviously i prefer the pound over the euro because euro has more weakness than the pound and this is why i bought gbp aud right so these are all fundamental reasons right and then of course i told you guys that i that i i lost like four trades but if i have four trades that have a stop loss of 30 pips this trade alone that i just uh, executed uh last week thursday currently i'm floating in a in a profit of 93 pips a trade one trade is 30 pips stop loss three trades 90 pips stop loss and i'm having this trade that goes in my direction i'm having a udchf that also goes in my direction and then i bank a few pips right this trade moved 105 pips you know so this is why i say i still take losses but i'm confident because i understand why the trades did not go accordingly and why things went the the way they did right so this is just the video that i wanted to do for you guys especially if you're a retail trader and you've been trading for more than a year and you're still struggling you're not yet profitable be honest with yourself first and foremost that is the first starting point be honest with yourself once you are honest with yourself you will then make progress you will then see progress in your trading see progress in your life avoid mistakes that other retail traders make mistakes that are currently holding you and your business from experiencing exponential growth by your business i mean trading because trading is a business it's an investment business like i showed you i'm swing trading that's an investment that is how you need to treat your trading okay guys as always if you found value from this video don't forget to like the video if you have not yet subscribed please subscribe and of course also share the video with someone you feel might find this very valuable or might use this or might benefit from this video and you have not if you have not yet turned on the notification bell please do so so that you can be notified when i share or drop another video right and of course i also i was gonna share with you why my trades did not actually work on the japanese yen right so i'll give you a quick summary so what is happening this week on march the 13th we are cat we have the shunto right shunto it is a wage negotiation outcome in the japanese economy 
So what that means is if they or currently they are expected or there has been rumors that the wage negotiations will be higher or the outcome will be higher than what we've or than what they have experienced previously or in the previous years. So if wages are hiked or increased, that means that it will feed into inflation and that will also what result in the Bank of Japan actually potentially increasing their interest rates either in March in the March meeting or the April meeting. Because if you remember or if you've paid attention, the Bank of Japan are actually looking at two things. They're looking at inflation being above their 2% target, core inflation specifically, being above their 2% in a stable manner, being above the 2% target in a stable manner. Then secondly, they are looking at wage growth. So now inflation is above 2% even though it has dropped back towards 2%. It was at 4% at some point. But then now markets are pay paying attention to what? Wages. So if wages go up and inflation is above 2% and wages are now the negotiations come come out greater than what is expected or very positive then that pushes what or applies more pressure on the bank of japan to do what to start tightening financial conditions and that is when we can see them doing what hiking interest rates and remember like i've always said when a currency is hiking interest rates or a central bank is hiking interest rates it boosts the value of that economy and then you'll have investments going into that economy right so that is why investors or market participants started buying the Japanese yen heavily and we saw GBP JPY, NZD JPY, CAD JPY, USD JPY, all of those currencies or currency pairs started falling because on March 13th we having the outcome of the actual wage negotiation so pay attention to it if those if the numbers are disappointing then you know that okay it's definitely a buy on those currency quoted pairs or on those JPY quoted pairs, whether it's GBP JPY, NZD JPY, uh, CAT JPY, AUD JPY. But if the numbers come out greater, then you know that the Japanese yen will continue strengthening and it's going to be a free fall for all the Japanese uh, currency or the, like I said, GBP JPY, USD JPY, NZD JPY, all of those currencies will sell hard if wage negotiations come in positive if they come in negative or below what is expected then it will be buying hard right in terms of gbp jpy nzd jpy and all of those jpy coated pairs right so that was the reason why my trades actually or my buy positions were actually liquidated because of that market participants are, market participants are expecting that next week's outcome will be positive so they started buying the japanese yen early so that when it comes out positive next week they are they are already in the move right and not jumping in at that point so that just gives you a roundup of how confident you can be when you trade with fundamentals because you know why your trade did not work and you understand why and what the next move is if your trade does not work it does not leave you confused because you're not sure what is really happening or what just happened right but that's the end of the video guys and if you've stayed up to this point thank you for your attention and your time because you're paying with your time right now you're not paying with money but with your time with and time is infinitely greater than money if you understand that concept you'll go very far in life so thank you for using your time wisely and like I said, guys, if you're struggling and you're not profitable yet, swing trading, fundamentals, that those are your two answers. Try them out. You've tried all the other things out. Unless if you still want to stick to lying to yourself. But if you want to be honest with yourself, try those things out and see how they go. If they fail, then you can stick. You can go back. You can, you can always go back to what you already know right now. Right. But if they do change your trading, then all the best and good luck to you. Cheers, guys. See you guys in the next video.